Well, hello everyone, my name is Zwigo and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the ROM hack Pokemon Moon Emerald. It's basically just base emerald but with a lot of changes. For example, there are Pokemon up until generation 7 in this game and you also have the physical special split, a day and night cycle which I will get into later in the video and just a lot of other quality of life changes. But one of the most important things is that it has increased shiny odds. So I thought why not complete this great ROM hack with only shiny Pokemon. This video is nothing like Small Ants or Plunker Boys videos because the shiny odds in this game are pretty high. So if you're someone that doesn't like the shiny hunt but loves shiny Pokemon, this is going to be the ROM hack for you. Before we get into it, let's explain the rules real quick. I can capture a single Pokemon every time I get a gym badge and it has to be the first shiny Pokemon that I encounter. So in total I'm going to have nine shiny Pokemon with my starter being the first one before the first gym badge. Let me know in the comments what your favorite shiny Pokemon is and let's try to hit 777 likes since that's basically the lucky number and we're going to be needing a lot of luck. I will also be using the regular rules where I can't use any items, I can not use a HM Pokemon actually, my Pokemon that I have to capture need to be able to learn the HMs. So I kinda need to be picky with the shiny Pokemon that I get. So let's get a ride into it. I name myself Shiny for obvious reasons, jump out of the back of the moving truck and go straight to where I can pick my starter. But the starters have been changed by Rowlet, Litten and Poplio. My favorite of the three is Rowlet, but Litten is a close second though. I mean, just look at their shiny forms, they are both very nice. But I decided to go for Rowlet anyway. And after about 10 minutes of resetting, I already got my shiny Rowlet and I got so lucky, I guess, that the opposing Pokemon was shiny as well. I don't think that happens a lot in regular Pokemon games. I named Rowlet Owlie, take on my rival, but my shiny Pokemon is just superior to her cat, and skip through all the tutorial stuff to go to Roxanne immediately. Everybody in this game also has changed teams to make the game a lot harder. For example, Roxanne now has a Carbink that loves the Toxic Stall and combined with that she has a Tyrant and a Alolan Geodude as well as a Rockruff. Even though all of these Pokemon are weak to my little Owlie, he still doesn't shine enough to beat all of them on its own. So I decided to evolve my Rowlet at level 17 into Dartrix, which in my opinion is one of the coolest Pokemon names ever. Dartrix. It just sounds cool. Even though Aoi has now evolved, he still has a lot of trouble with this gym battle, mostly because he's also weak to rock types because he's a flying type. And since Razor Leaf is a physical type move and most rock types are physically defensive, it isn't doing as much as I'd want to. But after a couple more attempts, I did get a lot of critical hit luck and managed to sweep through Roxanne with only the move Razor Leaf. After getting my first gym badge, I decided to call this weird old man. I can now get another shiny Pokemon, so I went to Granite Cave to run around a little bit. After spending some time here, I found out that you could get Gligars here, and that is exactly what my shiny Pokemon was. And I was so happy with it because it's a blue shiny. It's amazing. So I managed to capture it and name it Bertha, because Bertha in Pokemon Platinum always has a Gliscor that loves to screw me over, so hopefully this one will do the same to my opponents. With Bertha in hand, I decided to go to Brawly immediately after delivering the letter to Steven. And I'm not going to lie here, my Owly did most of the work with Pick. And all of Brawly's Pokemon just kept going for a bulk up and just never attacked me. I guess because the AI is a little bit broken in this game. So with all of my picks, I was able to defeat Brawly and make my way over to Slateport City. After doing all of the museum shenanigans, I head on over to May. As my Gligar destroyed Wingull with Rock Tomb, Ali took care of Poliwhirl with Razor Leaf, and then Toracat went down to a couple of Rock Tombs as well. As you may have forgotten, we do now have two gym badges, so we get another shiny Pokemon. I decided to go to the route of the daycare and search for something there. And to my surprise, I found a Hawlucha, which is our third flying type shiny. I guess I'm becoming a bird keeper now? But I'm of course not going to complain, Hawlucha is a very good Pokemon. Another very nice looking shiny if I do say so myself. I decided to name it Dio, and then I decided to take on Watson. As I just said, we do have a lot of flying type shinies right now, but one of them is immune to electric types and the other one is just neutral. So even though we're a bird keeper, we're not that weak to electric types. 
But that doesn't make this fight any easier. We still wiped a bunch of times to his Magneton or Elekid. Even his Alolan Raichu could wipe me easily. Mostly because I didn't have that many amazing movesets on my Pokemon but I managed to scrape by in the end. It starts off with Toga Demaru, which I can only really hit with knockoff, so that's what I do, I just knock it off with my Gligar. Charger Bug goes down to some Rock Tombs, not really any problems here either, but that Magneton comes out. And for some reason, this AI just keeps on going for Thunder Wave and Shock Wave, even though it doesn't affect my Gligar. It must just take the Flying type and not take the Ground type into consideration because I don't see any other explanation to why it would do this. And since it did this, my Gligar was able to come out on top with some knockoffs. I was able to get off one more knockoff on Elekid before going down as well, as I then sent out Dio to take it out with a couple more thieves, and he then sends in his last Pokemon, Alolan Raichu. Dio did a decent amount of damage on it before going down to some Shockwaves and then Owly finished it off with the Razor Leaf, gaining ourselves another Gym Badge. I then went outside and this is where the Day and Night Cycle stuff comes in. My entire screen was red and I really did not like this feature because it even did this in battles. It just screwed up the color scheme and I feel like this feature should just be taken out entirely. We then went to the Meteor Falls to clean up Team Aqua and Team Magma. Since we got another Gym Badge, this means that we can get another encounter. So I went to Fiery Path because I kind of wanted a Fire-type Pokémon. And my prayers were answered with a not-that-amazing Fire-type in Torkoal. But it is a very cool shiny because it is gold. So after capturing it, I named it Rami and then took the cable car up to Maxi. As you can see here, the red stuff totally ruins the battle. But even though we couldn't see a lot, this battle was very easy because Gligar just acrobatics every single one of his Pokemon into oblivion. So we hike down the mountain and go to Flannery's gym. But she wasn't even that hard because I managed to beat her on my first attempt after grinding up my team because I was really low in the level department on Torkoal. Flannery starts off with Magmar. And I thought that my Torkoal was going to be able to take on this Magmar, but it has Earthquake, which means that my little turtle is now dead. So I switch in Bertha, go for a Rock Tomb and some Acrobatics, and that takes it out. The next Pokémon is Litwick, at a pretty low level compared to the Magmar. But an Acrobatics manages to one-shot the little candle, as she then goes into Arcanine and goes for a Solar Beam, so I decide to switch into Alley to take minimum damage. And then hit a plug before going down to Fire Blast. So Bertha can come in and clean up Arcanine as she then sends out Torkoal. I hit one more move before it goes for Solar Beam, so I switch in Howlucha. I then rock smash it a couple of times to try and lower its defense, but an overheat is going to take me out here. So I go into Bertha and finish off Torkoal as she then goes into her final Pokemon, a shiny Salandit. So gym leaders can also have shiny Pokemon in this game. Pretty cool. It doesn't make Salandit any more bulky, so we still one shot and get our next gym badge. Which automatically translates into a new encounter, so I go to the desert and find myself a shiny Trapinch. Which is something I definitely won't complain about because Shiny Trapinch, Vibrava and Flygon all look very good in their shiny forms. To be honest, we haven't really had a bad looking shiny yet. With this new team member, we backtrack all the way to Norman to take him on. Luckily for us though, he doesn't have slacking anymore, he now has a lot more Pokemon. Like Oranguru, which is a normal psychic type. And it's pretty strong and bulky, so it managed to take care of my team a couple of times. And the big monkey was really the biggest threat on his team. He also did have a Snorlax, which would not go down easily either. And it could really do some decent damage to my team. But besides those two Pokemon, his team was rather easy to walk over. Since he starts off with an Alolan Raticate, which he can one-shot with a Rock Smash from Dio, he then goes into his Stoutland. So I sacrificed Trapinch to go into something better. So I switched in Remy and we had a Body Slam Flame Wheel battle for a couple of turns until he healed up and eventually took out my very bulky turtle. So I then switch in Owly and finish off the Stoutland with Razor Leaf. Kamala came in and this thing just went for Yawn the whole time. Even though I was asleep already, it just kept on going for Yawn. I swear, the AI in this rum hack is not amazing. So a couple more sharp leafs and we take it down. Then he goes into Porygon 2. And since we got paralyzed, we lose this matchup as we did get hit by a lot of single beams. So I went into Dio and I rock smashed the Porygon to death. 
as he then sent in his Tick Boy Snorlax. Dio is able to do a lot of damage with Rock Smash, but immediately gets taken out by some Body Slams, which means that my Macho Bird has fainted. So I go into Bertha and I'm able to finish off Snorlax and the final Pokemon Oranguru with only the move Acrobatics, which gives us our fifth gym badge, but now we have to capture a water type shiny. And the only place where I actually found a water type Pokemon was below Marvel City, and that was a Jupiter, which is exactly what I got. Still not a bad looking shiny, I quite like the purple aesthetics on it. So I managed to capture it, name it Bubbly, and then my Dartrix evolved into a Decidueye. Which kind of has a weird looking sprite in this game if you ask me. But it does learn an amazing stab move in Spirit Shackle. While traveling to the Weather Institute, my Dupiter also evolved into an Araquanid, and it totally ruins the shiny. Just look at this thing, what even is this? But we're not gonna let that stop us, let's just take on Mei and then move on to Winona. But I'm not going to lie here, her team was very easy to take down, but she did have a shiny Toracat. Which was decent enough, but after getting our HM for fly, we moved on to Winona, the next gym leader. But as I walked into the gym, this monstrosity happened? I don't know what this is, please someone send help. After making my way through the mess that is this gym, I reached Winona, and I immediately get greeted by the evolved version of my Gligar. The battle of the species, but sadly enough my non-evolved species is not going to be able to stand up to the Gliscor. So I bring in Dio to bounce on the Gliscor and kill it. So I shockwave, bounce, then one more shockwave and that thing is down already. Skarmory, the steel bird of justice. Also gets taken out rather quickly by some shockwaves and then a Oricorio comes out. It managed to one-shot my Dio, so I had to switch in my Owly and take it out with Spirit Shackle as our next Pokemon was Crobat. So after Owly gets destroyed, I decide to go into my Turtle. It was able to do okay damage with Body Slam and Lava Bloom, but then the Crobat switched out into Altaria while it took an overheat. It then proceeded to finish me off as I then went to the Trap Inch and finished off the rest of her team with Rock Slides. Trap Inch might look tiny and frail, but it has a very high attack stat, so don't mess with it. But a new gym badge means a new Pokemon. Which is something I kind of forgot because I decided to take on Mei before I got my next encounter. But her team was honestly not that bad to beat, the only Pokemon I really had trouble with was her Togekiss who was actually able to take out three of my team members, those being Trapinch, Araquanid, and Gligar, before Torkoal could finish it off. The rest of her team then went down rather quickly, as I then went to Mount Pyre to evolve my Gligar into a very nice looking Gliscor. It could have been a better shiny if the yellow was a different color, but I really don't mind it that much nice. And after this, I also got my next encounter, which was a Drifloom which is also a very beautiful looking shiny, but it is another flying type which we already have plenty of, and it's a ghost type which I also already have. But with all of those things aside, Driftblim is definitely not a bad Pokemon. And it will come in handy against Tate and Liza. We chat out with Maxi at the top of Mount Pyre, and went to the Team Magma Hideout to evolve my Trapinch into a Verbrava, and take on Maxi as he's about to summon Groudon. And this fight was actually very easy, I expected to lose here because I only had 3 Pokemon left from the entire Team Magma hideout. But I managed to take him out rather quickly with Auli, Dio and Bertha. His team isn't even that bad because he has a Persian, Hunchcrow and Slazzle. But my shiny Pokemon are just superior. We then also destroyed the entire Team Aqua hideout and scared away the big sailor. And then traveled to Moss Deep City to take on our 7th gym battle with Tate and Liza. But my team just totally was not ready to take them on. My Pokemon were too low of level and I actually really needed Driftblim on the team which I didn't add yet since Dio is really not doing anything against any of their Pokemon. And the only Pokemon that could really take on most of hers was my Araquanid, because it has a lot of special defense, so their special moves are not going to do that much damage, and I have Leech Life, which is super effective on most of their Pokemon except for Delphox. So after I got my ass handed to me, I decided to evolve Drifloon into Drifblim and also grind up the rest of my team to around level 41 to 42. And so this is how the battle went, I started off with Owly and Bubbly. 
Ollie got hit by a Psychic Fangs pretty hard, but we managed to double up on Slow King to kill it. Next turn, they send out Lunatone and take out my Owlie, so I have to switch in someone else. So I switched in Boo, Bubbly got hit with a Psychic, and I then Leech Life the Bruxish. Next turn, Boo took out the Bruxish with Shadow Ball, and I hit a Leech Life on the Lunatone, as they sent down their next Pokemon, Delphox. I then went for a Shadow Ball on the Delphox and took out the Lunatone with another Leech Life. As their next Pokemon was Sorok, we also did get hit with a Shadow Ball on Brifblim by Delphox. And Bubbly hit a Leech Life on the Solrock. And then my Shadow Ball took out Delphox. And their final Pokemon was a Mega Gardevoir. Together, they took out my Drifblim. So I went into Remy, and then my Araquanid finished off Solrock, so now it's two against one. And after Torkoal went down to a Focus Blast, we managed to take it out with some Leash Lives and Acrobatics from my Gliscor. This gives us our seventh Gym Badge. But before we get our next encounter, I decided to take on the double battle with Steven against Maxi and Tabitha first. But this fight was honestly not even that hard, and Steven also had some shiny Pokemon on him. And they have a shiny Braviary, which looks so good. I, I mean, I'm just a sim for blue shinies. I can't help myself. They all look so amazing most of the time. So after saving the space station, I went to Archie. Which means that I still didn't have my encounter yet. Because I didn't really know what I wanted. But Archie himself, once again, was just a pushover, just like Maxi. Ali took care of his first Pokemon in Lolan Persian pretty quickly with some flies. Next up was Crocodile. Crocodile managed to take out my Owly, so I switched in Bubbly and took him down with some Leech Lives and then Crobat as well with a lot of Surfs. As the world was then about to end, we called up on our favorite green snake, who loves to shout at Fish and Godzilla, in order to save the world. And before we now take on Wallace, I went to the Shoal Cave and picked myself up a shiny Sneasel. Yes, it's pink, but I don't think it necessarily looks bad at all. I think it's actually a pretty well done shiny. After naming it Raphael, I decided to evolve it into Weavile and then go up to Juan. Juan starts off with an Araquanid, but we have the shiny version of it, so we should come out on top here. But because I decided to set up a spider web, because for some reason I thought that it was sticky web, but spider web just makes the opponent not be able to switch out, and this was immediately my downfall. This also just meant that the rest of my team was going to be totally destroyed by his Kingdra, so I decided to evolve my Vibrava into Flygon. After this I went back to Juan, still got my ass handed to me a couple of times, but after a couple more attempts, I was able to overpower all of his Pokemon. Bertha two-shot his first Pokemon Galissapod with Acrobatics, two of them. Next, Toxapex, the bulky bunker, went down to some Earthquakes because it was not able to one-shot me with Ice Beam and I hung on with 7 HP, which was pretty lucky. Bertha hit one more Acrobatics on Wishcash before going down. Ali then went for a Leaf Blade to finish off Wishcash. Next up was Empoleon, so I decided to go into Weavile, do some chip damage at Night Slash before going down, then switch into Flygon and Earthquake the Penguin until it dies. Flygon then also managed to one-shot Kingdra with Dragon Claw, and then last up was Araquanid, and a couple of Rock Slides later, and we have already defeated Juan. Before we get our last encounter, I decided to take on Wally first. He starts off with a Dragonair, so I lead off with Weavile, but I can't even do a lot of damage to it because I don't have an Ice-type move on my Ice-type Pokémon for some reason. So in the end, my Weavile goes down, so I switch in my Drifblim and finish it off with Hex. Next one out is a Lolan Persian, and it manages to put me to sleep in a Hypnosis, but in the end, we still do come out on top because it decided to set up a Dragon Dance while it should have attacked me in order to take me out, but it didn't do that, so my Thunder finished off Persian as he then sends in Magnazone. I decided to just sack Drifblim, then go into Flygon and finish off Magnazone with a single Earthquake. He then goes into Mega Gardevoir. I had one more Earthquake before going down to Dazzling Gleam, and then Gliscor can come in and finish off his last two Pokémon, Rose Raid and Gardevoir with Acrobatics. This means that we can now go and get our final encounter. So I went to the Sky Pillar, and here I found a shiny Bronzong. Which is not going to be bad at all, because Bronzong is definitely some bulk that we do need on the team. And we're probably going to be using him as a wall most of the time. 
After naming him Big Ben, I decided to head on over to the first Elite Four member, Sydney and his Dark type Pokemon. It starts off Big Bug versus Big Crocodile. Sadly enough, Big Bug gets smashed by stones after I hit a surf. So I swap in Bertha and decide to just finish it off as he then goes into Greninja. I predict an Ice type move here and go into Bronzong. I then hit one more Gyro Ball before going down to two Dark Pulses and bringing in Owlie to go ahead and Leaf Blade this thing after getting hit with an Ice Punch. Mega Absol is able to finish off Owly. Bertha then comes in, goes for the X Scissor, and Absol is immediately down as he then brings in Incineroar, which I can take down with some Earthquakes, then Hunchcrow, who can't stand up to some Acrobatics, and finally is Persian. I'm able to hit one X Scissor before going down to a Fake Out, a Dark Pulse, and a Power Gem, so I then go into Weavile and finish this thing off with Acrobatics. This does mean that we can move on to Phoebe and the Ghost-type Pokémon immediately after. My first Pokémon here is going to be Araquanid because she starts off with Palosand. I go for two Waterfalls and that easily takes care of the Sandcastle. Next on out is Frozlas, so I go for another Waterfall before going down to two Thunderbolts, sadly enough. So Raphael can just easily come in and one-shot Frozlas with Night Slash. Delmize with two Night Slashes as well as I get hit with a Heavy Slam. Next on out is an Alolan Marowak, so I go for the Night Slash, it doesn't quite kill, but the Flare Blitz recoil damage does take me out and also takes him down. Then I just switch in Ali, and the last two Pokemon are Drifblin and Mega Gengar, so I just go for the Spirit Shackle twice and we manage to overpower Phoebe. So let's move on to the next Elite Four member, which is not Glacia. It is actually Graxi, and he does not have an Ice-type team, he actually has a full team of Ground-type Pokémon. So, with this in mind, I naturally lead off with my Water-type here, Bubbly, as he leads off with an Alolan Duck Trio. I manage to one-shot it with Surf as he then goes into his next Pokémon, Camerupt, who hits me with an Eruption, but my Surf also one-shots as I only have a little bit of HP left. The next Pokémon on the list is Shiny Flygon. So I let myself go down, then switch in my own Flygon and Dragon Claw away at it until we eventually come out on top. The next Pokemon is Gastrodon, the most inferior water ground type, which sadly enough takes me down with Ice Beam, so I go into Gliscor to go for the Acrobatics, then Mudsdale comes out, which I also take down with some Earthquakes and Acrobatics. And last on out is Torterra and two Acrobatics can finish it off because a Seed Bomb was not enough to kill my Gliscor. So this means that we can move on to Drake, the final Elite Four member and immediately the hardest one. Mostly because he has Dragon-type Pokémon and those are naturally very strong, as he has Pokémon like Guzzlord, Mega Garchomp, Como o which can all do a major amount of damage, and most of them can take hits quite well as well. And since I don't really have Ice-type moves on my team yet, because I don't have any physical Ice-type move TMs for my Weavile, I decided to just keep on going at it and the Como o just kept on destroying me until I eventually did win. It starts off with this Mega Garchomp against my Gliscor. I go for a lot of acrobatics as he sets up some sword stances and heals up as well. So because of those heals, my Gliscor actually loses this matchup. And so I decide to go into Flygon because he would outspeed and kill with Dragon Claw here. He then sends out Turtonator, so I go for the Earthquake, I also get hit with a Dragon Pulse but survive with 11 HP and then take it out with another one. Drampa also gets destroyed by two Dragon Claws because I got lucky that he missed his Fire Blast. And then the big, the boy, the fat, the Guzzlord is coming out next. I'm able to hit one more Dragon Claw before going down and then switching in Araquanid who is able to take it out with some Leech Lives. Then an Alolan Exeggutor is his second to last Pokemon. And Bubbly actually wins this matchup by spamming Leech Life as well. And the last Pokemon is the Como O. Shiny Como O, actually. Which looks atrocious, in my opinion. And of course, because we have no moves for this on a Raquanid, I decide to just let it go down and do some chip damage, then switch in Bronzong and go for some extra sensories in order to win this battle and finally move on to the champion Wallace. But before I did this, I actually went out of the Elite Four in order to get rid of my Weavile Strength and Learned Blizzard. Because for this I have to go to the Move Deleter, and somehow it changed his gender. Yeah, I don't know what's happening either. And in this game, Wallace actually doesn't have a Water-type team, he has a Fairy-type team, which is way better, because otherwise you would have Juan with Water-types and then Wallace too. 
I don't really understand why they did that in a normal emerald anyway. So let's just get into the battle. He starts off with a shiny Alolan Ninetales. So I lead off with Big Ben and the Gyro Ball immediately finishes it off. Next up is a Sylveon. I also hit it with a Gyro Ball but it barely does any damage and we easily get taken out after that so I have to switch in Gliscor. So I go into Bertha who is able to finish off the Sylveon with a lot of acrobatics as his next Pokemon is a Milotic. So I switch in Raphael, hit one more Acrobatics before going down to a Moonblast and then go into Owly to go for a Leaf Blade but I sadly enough get taken out rather quickly and then I have to switch in Gliscor again and this Acrobatics is going to finish off the beautiful Schneck. Then a big Toadstool came out. Uh, luckily he just went down to Acrobatics, then a Rybomb B also went down to Acrobatics and last it was Mimikyu and that thing goes down to two Earthquakes because he did not have the ability to disguise for some reason, which means that we have defeated Pokemon Moon Emerald with only shiny Pokemon. This was a pretty interesting and fun video for me to make because I absolutely love shiny Pokemon, I just don't really like shiny hunting, but if you guys can smash 10,000 likes on this video, I'm going to regret this. I will actually do this challenge in a regular game where the shiny odds are basically full and I will have to spend a lot more time on it. So let me know in the comments down below what you think I should do next. I actually want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters because they do help me a lot. If you want to sign up yourself you can click the link in the description you get access to our members only discord server if you do where you can talk with me and all of the other members. If that's something that interests you you can always sign up. And with that out of the way, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo, and I'll see you guys next time.